Hey everyone, and welcome to the AVID3 exercise. Today, we're going to introduce audio. Let's get right into it. To start, let's bring our cursor to the bottom of the screen, bring up the dock, and click AVID Nexus Client Manager. This should be routine for you by now. We're going to double click Nexus 4 so that we can log in. Our username is our access ID. Our password is our first name, capital first initial, and lowercase for the rest. You can click the green plug icon or press enter. We're going to mount our workspaces by double clicking. Then we'll minimize the window by pressing the yellow minus button. Let's bring our cursor back down to the dock again and open Avid Media Composer. It's going to take another minute to open it up. All right, and now we are at the front gate. As always, we're going to import the MA Student User Profile. So we go to the User Profile, drop down menu, and click it. We're going to click Import User or User Profile, then navigate to FPA.com, followed by the number of your computer, Avid Exercises, User Profile, and MA Student. Then we're going to click Open. You can see now that the workspace is loaded up behind the front gate. We're going to click the folder icon and find our project. It should still be in Avid 1 under your last name Avid 1. It also shows up here in the front gate because I was working on it earlier today on the same computer. However, that might not always be the case. So it's always better to be safe than sorry and find the file here in the open project folder. Now you can press open. And now we're greeted with the project. First things first, always open the student standard workspace. And it looks like since last time, the markers are still present. You could tell because everything is purple, which means it's selected. To clear the markers, we're going to press the G key. That's the shortcut. You can also press the Clear Marks button right here. And now let's create the audio bin because we're working with audio today. To create a new bin, we can right click in the bin window and select New Bin, or we can press Command N. That creates a new bin, and notice the text is already highlighted so we can type a name for the bin. We're going to title this one audio. Click outside the title box or press enter to save the title. We're going to double click the bin just to make sure that it's open. And now let's bring some audio in. So let's go to the source browser. I'm going to do this by clicking in the sidebar tab. And I'm going to navigate towards our audio. The audio for this exercise is going to be in the Avid Exercises workspace. We're going to double click Go to Avid Exercises, Avid 3, Media, and Audio. Now we have all three of our audio tracks that we're going to be using. So I'm going to click the first one. And you know what? This time, I'm going to hold Command to click the next. And while holding Command still, click the third one. Now I have them all selected. As demonstrated in Avid 2, there are a couple ways to do this. I'm going to click Link to ensure that it is selected. Make sure the audio bin is the target bin, and then I'm going to click Link. Now here we are, we've got our tracks in the audio bin. Before we start working with audio, let's go over how audio is represented in the sequence. I'm going to click inside the Timeline window just to activate it, and we're going to activate the tracks that we're going to be using. 
I'm going to make sure A1 is blue and V1 is gray because we're just working with audio. So the only thing we want to splice in is audio. We can see right here that these are two speaker icons stacked on top of each other. This signifies that this is a stereo track, so it should play in both the left speaker and the right speaker. For this sequence, we're going to use three stereo audio tracks. To create a stereo audio track, you just press Command, Shift, and U together. Command, Shift, U. Now we have another stereo audio track. And now let's add a third track. So Command, Shift, U. We have three tracks of audio ready to use. The reason why we have three is because the lowest one is going to be used for music. The second one is going to be used for the ambient noise. And the main one is going to be used for sound effects. Now you can organize audio tracks in any way that you prefer, but for this video, we'll do it this way. It's also important to note, the left side is the source monitors, video, and audio, and the right side is the sequence audio and video tracks. We want to route this audio track from the source monitor so that it splices in to the correct location on the sequence. To do that, we're just simply going to click and drag from the source track to the sequence track that we want to splice into. A2 this time. We're going to deactivate A1 and A3 and make sure that only A2 is active. And now we're going to preview the track that we want to use. Let's go to City Traffic. In the source monitor, it's going to be black because there is no video for this, just audio. You can even see this reflected here. There is no video track anymore, only audio. We can hit spacebar or the play button and hear what's going on. This is going to be used as ambient sound in the video. You may notice this now in movies and TV shows, depending on the locations. So let's set an endpoint at the very beginning, and let's move the cursor all the way to the end and set an out point. I'm going to make sure that the marker is where I want it to be. So I'm going to click and drag in the timeline position bar and move the marker all the way to the beginning of the sequence. Now that it's at the beginning of the sequence, instead of pressing the V key, I'm going to press the B key, B as in boy. This is the shortcut to overwrite. Overwriting acts differently than splicing in. When you splice in a clip, it shifts the next clips back. But when you overwrite, it simply pastes the clip right on top of the next clips. We want to overwrite this time because we don't want to risk accidentally shifting the video clips already on the timeline. But be careful in the future because overwrite may cut off the beginning of the next clip if you're not careful. Now that the track is in, we won't be able to tell what's happening without scrubbing through, unless we show the waveforms. So, let's open the track control panel. And with that, we have additional options for the audio tracks. For instance, waveforms. We see two waveforms because this is a stereo track, playing in the left ear and the right ear. Let's hear how it sounds. Now that city traffic audio was pretty loud, a lot louder than we want it to be. So let's bring it down. We're going to open the audio workspace located on the right side above the student standard workspace and we're going to see a whole new interface. This is the audio mixer and here we can see all of the audio tracks that we're currently using. We can see A1, A2, A3 and a master track. As we see A1, A2, A3. 
The master lets us control how loud everything is all together, but these let us tweak the individual volume of each clip that we are on. So I'm going to drop this by 7 about. We can see down here the decibel adjustment that we've made. And now let's see how it sounds. Still a little loud. So let's drop it down to about negative 10. A reminder, don't stress about matching my edits precisely, as this is simply an exercise, and you're doing a great job so far. Sounds good. So you may be wondering, how do we know if it's too loud or too quiet? After all, you can just raise or lower the volume on your computer. It'll sound just right there. But when we're mixing different audio tracks together to compose an awesome soundtrack, we have to keep in mind how loud things are. So there's a special tool that helps us out for this. It is the digital audio meter. It precisely reflects how loud the audio is outputting. If I bring the marker to the beginning and hit space, we could see it dancing around negative 20. We can also see inside the audio mixer the levels bouncing for the A2 audio track and the levels bouncing for the master track. One note, the master track has two scales, so whenever we discuss master audio levels, we are only looking at the scale on the left, the one that peaks at zero. Crafting an audio bed is like composing a shot. We have a foreground and a background. The sound coming from the foreground should be louder than the background noise, unless it's a stylistic decision. This is proximity audio editing. So let's demonstrate this with the city traffic audio track. Outside, it should be about this loud. But as the shot moves inside, the city traffic should be a lot quieter. Now we need to ramp the volume down. But if we do it on this, it's going to make the whole track loud again or the whole track quiet again. This is where we use keyframes. So let's zoom in on the timeline and get ready to use keyframes. I'm going to move the marker to right before the cut between clip 1 and clip 2 because this is where the shot goes from outside to inside. And then I'm going to click this drop down menu next to the waveform and show the volume. The track lightens up and we see a very thin line across the whole sequence. That represents the volume level of the audio track. Now, we're going to press the apostrophe key to insert a keyframe. A small black triangle appears right where the marker is. This is a keyframe. Alone, it is powerless. But when we pair it with a friend, right after the cut, we'll press apostrophe again. And now we have another keyframe. But to edit them, we must activate audio keyframe mode. If it is not already highlighted, click it until it turns purple to activate audio keyframe mode. Now, when we go to an audio keyframe, we'll see a pointer finger that will allow us to edit it. This lets us make volume adjustments without changing the entire track volume. So now that we have this keyframe and this keyframe, when we lower the keyframe on the right, by clicking and dragging, we only lower the volume of this keyframe and everything after. I'm going to drop it by negative 10, which you can see in the bottom of the window. Now, if we move the cursor to the beginning, it gets quiet when we get inside. And it stays quiet for the rest of the track. But the shot eventually goes back outside, so it can't stay quiet for the rest of the sequence. And so when it goes to clip 5, we're going to do the same thing and ramp it up a little bit at the cut between clip 4 and clip 5. I'm going to press the apostrophe key to place another keyframe.
and place another keyframe here right after the cut going outside. I'm going to raise this back to zero. Now let's hear what we did. Nice, we're back outside, and we have successfully keyframed that audio. So now, let's add another audio clip. We're going to go back to the student standard workspace, and we're going to go to running on concrete in our audio bin. So I'm going to make sure that I'm there. Double click audio, and now double click running on concrete. It should be ready for us to play now. Sounds about right. I'm going to place the endpoint by pressing I right at the beginning of that. Move the marker to the end. Press the O key to make an out point. And now I'm going to route and select where I want to place this audio. I'm going to place sound effects on A1, so I'm going to route to A1. It automatically activates it and deactivates A2. And let's see where we want the running to start. It looks like the running starts right here on... Oops! Moved way too fast there. Clip 8. So right about here. Make sure that this is the only track active, so I don't put it in wrong. Then I'm going to press the B, as in boy, key to overwrite in. I don't see the waveforms yet, so i got to turn it on. And let's show the volume keyframes as well. I'm going to move the marker back to the beginning of clip 8 and the running. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And now we can see the individual waveforms. Each of these spikes represent one of the impacts of the footstep. But I can already tell that I might have placed the running track just a little too early on the sequence. I want it to start here, right at the impact of his right foot. We're going to shift this clip over. So I'm going to use the overwrite splice in tool, aka the red arrow to move this across the timeline. Now to slide things freely, while clicking and dragging a clip with either arrow, hold command to bypass snapping to other clips. So I can move it frame by frame where I want it to be. I'm going to start it right where my marker is, which is where we saw that first running step. Continuing with proximity audio editing, it wouldn't be as loud if we were further away, like over here, than it would be here. So we're going to have to ramp the audio down while it cuts between the two clips. We're going to make sure that audio keyframe mode is activated so we can edit these keyframes. Then we're going to show the volume level on the A1 track. Oh, I turned it off. Now it's back on. Then, with the marker right before the cut between clip 8 and clip 9, we'll press the apostrophe key to insert a keyframe. We'll move the cursor a little bit further out, right after the cut. Press the apostrophe key to add another keyframe. And then, we'll wait until our cursor looks like a pointer finger, click and drag, and drop it, I'll say, minus 8, about. Now, let's bring it back over here and ramp it back up. Here, it ducked, meaning it went from loud to quiet. Here, we're going to ramp it up, so we'll go from quiet to loud. I'm going to place a keyframe where the marker is before the edit by pressing apostrophe. Place the marker right after the cut, then press apostrophe again to place the second keyframe. Then let's bring it back to zero. Now let's see how it plays.
Sometimes it scrolls a little fast, so I prefer to use the scroll bar. Now this is a fun one. They get further away as they run through here. So, with this keyframe still here, I'm going to place another keyframe all the way at the end of clip 10. Press apostrophe to place the keyframe. And I'm going to drop this one to negative 35 about. So the running is going to slowly duck down from louder to quieter from the beginning of the clip to the end of the clip. And it's going to sound like they're getting further away. So that looks good. Or really, sounds good. Now, since these running footsteps weren't actually recorded with this video, we have to make sure that they align correctly with the footsteps shown on screen. Uh-oh, it looks like the footstep audio is actually faster than the running on screen. So we'll have to slow the audio down. To do this, we're going to click the clip. It could be either with the red or the yellow arrow. And then we're going to go to the effects workspace. This houses all of the effects that you can apply to audio and video clips. For this one, we're going to go to audio clip in the top column. And then we're going to go to time shift. Now we can see the effect on the top right. And then we're going to double click time shift. Now we can see the effect icon is over this clip. That means that the effect is applied. But we haven't done anything to modify it, so it's not doing anything yet. So with the clip still selected, we're going to open effect mode. This brings up the effect editor, which lets us edit what happens in this effect. Now, this may look a little overwhelming with all the knobs and the information on this, but we only have to focus on one thing, the speed. We could pretend that this is a real life knob, and we could slow it down by moving the mouse to the left after clicking and dragging. So I can click and drag to the right or to the left, I can make it 25% speed or 400% speed, but we just need to slow it down a little bit. So let's go to 90. We're as close to 90 as we can get with the mouse. Then we'll click render. Hit OK. And let's hear how it sounds. There we go, it looks like we got the audio as close as we can get it. And now we've just applied our first effect. We can delve very deep into effects, but a lot of these get very specific. So be sure to ask your local mayor staff for any assistance if you'd like to explore. We're going to go back to the student workspace. We're going to zoom out a little. And now let's bring the cursor back to the beginning. Let's zoom out again. There we go. We want to add a music bed now. We want to add a little emotion to this scene. We have something perfect. In the audio bin, we're going to double click Invisible Enemy by Jack, not Jack Black, <laughs> Jeremy Black. Let's route to the correct track. A3 is going to be our music track. So click and drag from the green source audio track to A3. We'll activate waveforms while we're here and show volume. And let's see how this track plays. So with the music selected, we're going to activate one more thing in the source monitor so that we can both be on the same page. Up here in the top right of the source monitor, 
we're going to click the drop down arrow next to the time codes and below source tracks we're going to go A1 TC1 that means time code 1 and make sure these all say 0 now that it says that when I move this marker it shows exactly how many minutes seconds and frames we are into the clip and so we're going to place it at exactly 2603. You can use your mouse to get it close, and you can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to get exactly there. We'll place our in marker with the I key, and then at about a minute, we'll place the out marker. Got to make sure everything is routed. And then we'll press B to overwrite in. But oops, I didn't have it in the correct location. I want this music to play right when he gets the bag. So I'm going to hit Command Z. Then we're going to move the marker to the cut right between clip 4 and clip 5. We want to start building tension here after the mysterious bag handoff. And now let's click back into the source monitor and hit the B key to overwrite in. Nice. Hold up. Those waveforms don't look right. So let's zoom in and take a closer look. Whoa. This audio is so loud that the waveforms look like a block of sound. So let's go to the audio workspace before we play this, just to make sure that it's not going to blow our ears out. We're going to go to A3 in the track control panel, and we're going to drop it by 15 to start with. And let's hear how it sounds. Still a little loud, so let's drop it to minus 20. There's no explicit rule telling us how loud the music should be, but we want the music to be quiet enough to hear what happens on screen still. So let's consider the footsteps that are about to happen. You know what? I think I liked it better when it was at negative 15. So I'm going to press Command Z to undo the last change in volume. Otherwise, you can click and drag the slider back up to negative 15. Let's keep it playing. I really like how that snare hit begins right as they start running. Perfect. Let's go back to the student standard workspace and let's wrap this up. After the video ends, looks like there's a little bit of audio still leaking through. So we're going to hold the command key while we drag the marker and it's going to snap the marker at the edges of clips. Let's snap it to the end of clip 10. And now we're going to activate all the tracks. Make sure all the boxes for the tracks are blue in your sequence. With all the tracks activated, we're going to press the Y key to add and edit. This, if we move this marker out of the way, cuts the clips right where the marker was. Now, let's place the marker on the right side of the cut that we just made and then we'll select the clips by pressing T. This shortcut places in and out points on the ends of the clips that the marker is currently on. As you can see, this selection goes pretty far because the widest clip currently touching the marker is that long city traffic clip. Now with everything selected, we'll press the extract button. This will splice out the clips and delete them from the sequence. Perfect. Now let's get this audio cleaned up. 
We want all of these audio tracks to fade the same way the video is fading. So we're going to use a quick transition. Make sure it applies to the A1 through A3 tracks. Change it to a film fade. Make sure the slider is all the way to the left. Ensure that it is on our personal workspace. But this time, I want to make this a little longer. So we're going to make it 48 frames and start 48 frames out. As you can see, this reflects exactly what I'm typing here again. Everything is still correct. We'll add and render. And we'll see how it plays. Excellent. I'm going to zoom out now all the way. Let's start to wrap up and export. So I'm going to press the home key, or you can click and drag the marker to the beginning. Press I to place the in marker. Make sure that all our tracks are selected. Move the cursor all the way to the end. Press O to place the out marker. And now let's make sure every track that we want to export is pink. Looks good to me. We'll be inside of here. Right click. Render. Render in and out. Select our personal workspace. Ooh, it's telling me no effects to render. Looks like everything that we've had is already rendered. If it does this, you're fine. If you still can click OK, do click OK. But I'm going to hit Cancel this time. And now, let's export. We're going to go File, Output, Export to File. Then we're going to navigate to FPA.com, your personal workspace, Avid Exercises, Avid 3, and uh-oh, there's no Exports folder. Guess we're going to have to make one. To make a folder, we're going to click New Folder. But we have to make sure that Avid 3 is selected so that it creates a folder within Avid 3. New Folder. We're going to title this one Exports. Practicing good file management here. The more your files are organized, the more successful you will be, especially when you are sharing files with coworkers and colleagues. With exports as the folder selected for the export, we're going to change the export setting and make sure it's at Send to QT Movie Custom H264. Hey y'all, Future John here. I'm not sure if you noticed, because past me surely didn't, but I forgot to name the file correctly. It happens to the best of us sometimes. So don't leave your file name as last name avid1. Change it to last name avid3. I repeat, don't leave your file name as last name avid1. Please change it to last name avid3. Thanks so much. And then save. This one should take a little bit to export. So once again, please be patient. When you schedule time for the edit suites, please allow adequate time for exporting when you plan to finish. For longer projects, this could add up to a lot of time. And presto. Let's double check in Finder if everything worked out right. Personal workspace, exercises, Avid 3, exports. We're going to double click to open and let's see what it looks like. Make sure you have your volume on when you play it so you can hear the file. And it looks good to me. I can hear everything. Now let's start to wrap up. We're going to hit Command S. We're going to hit the X on the top left of the window. And then we're going to confirm that we're leaving. And before we finish up, I just want to let you know, there's a prologue at the end of this video, and it's going to discuss the audio beds workspace and other convenient ways to get sound and music for your student films. 
Now let's open up Nexus Client Manager and let's disconnect and hit Command Q. Let's double check that we don't have any stray programs open still. And we are good to go. Congratulations on finishing Avid 3 and thank you for staying until the end. And I'll see you in Avid 4.